All right. Hello, Internet. Uh, I'm Wayne, one of the game designers of Terrarium, and welcome again to our, our weekly development stream. Uh, today is a really exciting episode, if I'm going to call these episodes of this stream, because I'm joined with uh, four of the winners of our level design contest. Um, I've got Oscar Rooney, who is the grand prize winner here, uh, Derek Patton, Annabelle Taylor, and Reynold Sui. I hope I pronounced that right. You can correct me if I was wrong, Reynold. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and welcome. We're What we're going to be doing today is uh, we have the, the four levels that they submitted that put them among our winners, and we're going to play through those and... Um, talk to each creator as we go and give them an opportunity to sort of describe the process they went through while they developed, uh, while they designed the level, what they were thinking. And um, this whole thing is going to be run a bit like a panel. So we're going to all just jump in and out and ask questions and talk to each other as we go. Sound good? So Oscar, this is your level that I have queued up here separation wow. anxiety which i've played on stream before um yeah congratulations i mean you're the the grand prize winner um thank you <laughs> i'll get the ball rolling just by saying that this uh you know i've gushed over how good all the the levels that we had submitted were multiple times on stream before this has always been one of my favorite levels um Clearly, you put a ton of thought and testing and everything into this, and um, it also looks beautiful. So, you know, I genuinely have fun with this, uh, especially the first time um, when everybody submitted all the levels and we closed the deadline and we realized I had, all, you know, there was over 200 levels that we had to play. Um, it took me about, I don't know almost 90 minutes probably to beat this for the first time but it was really? it was a good 90 minutes i was I, it was one of the ones where i was just like oh wow and uh it was it was great so very well done congratulations uh do you want to start us off by giving us a little creator's brief on on separation anxiety yeah yeah sure um i guess i, I I named it Separation Anxiety because I wanted to focus on the separating Mugu from the gardener uh, mechanic. Um, and, it, and whilst there's multiple different stages to the level, it, it all sort of uh, centers around that idea. Um, and this first little area is quite a good uh, example of how I wanted to design the level because I find it quite stressful losing my Mugu. Um, and as such, I wanted to give the players sort of uh, a bit more control than they usually have, where, where they're just pulled away from you. Um, so I tried to give them multiple options at any stage in this level. They can go left or right from the outset. They can uh, choose uh, left or right again once they get past this first area. Uh, and I, find, I, I found designing this area quite interesting because I think the uh, carriages look a lot more, um, or cactus, sorry, uh, look a lot more intimidating but uh, having uh, designed it myself I would argue it actually requires uh, less lesser uh, skill to get past that um, so it, 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 it I, I don't know I found this first area really uh, entertaining to do because I think uh, it shows a lot about the player just from this first area whether they stick to their guns whether they swap between them uh, and which one they end up uh, sort of reliably uh, doing no it's interesting um, is the the cabbages definitely look more fearsome, but uh, mm. I, it, the when I first engaged with this level, I was convinced there was something, like a passageway behind that last cactus, and I spent so uh. long trying to get, get them all to roll through and get around there before I realized that that wasn't the point of that area. Uh, my <laughs> default was just to go this way, um, and yeah. I was killed by this smash grass more than once. Yeah. you have hiding in there. yeah they're way too easy to hide those smash crowds <laughs> yeah so yeah i guess that that right area is a lot more static um but but i, I actually find it a lot harder to go through um and and then we get here yeah which um 
this was, I think, the best use of the sleep mechanism that, that I saw anywhere. Um, just, just the fact that I have to actually not only use it and pull them through, but all the little places where you put these, like the water in the corner. So if I drag them too far, they go right into the water. Um, I, I love this whole section. Um, how was it building this? Like, what was the process like getting this perfected? It was, uh, it was frustrating at times. I'll, get, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, I, I thought of the idea because uh, I like, it felt quite interesting being able to control the Mugu from the other side of the wall. Uh, but I found going around uh, uh, obtuse angles, I guess, uh, they often got caught on, on the sides. So I came, I, I thought of this idea thinking that I don't, I want the angles to all be uh, relatively small, um, but to keep them on the other side of the wall, you have to make it a puzzle in the way that I've done because otherwise they'll just end up going in a circle. Um, in terms of designing this area, it was, I, I had already um, set up the, the space. I allocated the space before sort of designing these little stages. Um, and the Mugu have a lot of character in the ways that they move and stuff. So often I've designed a little area and uh, I would think, okay, there's a straight line between the Mugu and myself. Um, and then they would just go at a completely perpendicular angle to me when I called them. Uh, so I had to work around the, their sort of little quirks um, whilst designing it. And of course, it can be quite a punishing mechanic. So I really didn't want to make the water you know, cover the area, um, but at the same time, I didn't want you to be able to skip past an area without without really uh, feeling like you've overcome it. Um, so it took a lot of testing, uh, and I often went into a, another level, which was much more open, and just played around and and uh, sort of just experimented to see what felt good, what felt rewarding, what felt punishing. Um, yeah, I'm going to do my best to get to the end of this level while we're talking. Uh, you probably are just seeing me now. Oh, I died again. <laughs> You're probably just seeing me now <laughs> die to that smash grass on the, uh, on the left side. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to try and power through cause I do want to, if possible, showcase the end of this, but, um, given our time constraints, we may have to settle for just talking about it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I do love the way it's sectioned out too, into like this first area, the left side, the right side, the middle. Um, and eventually up around the outside of the arena too. Um, yeah, oh, I definitely there. found um, some of the levels I played were really, really fun. Um, but when they were slightly more difficult, I, I did find myself getting slightly frustrated if I if I made it quite far through the level and then and then I died and I feel like oh, I've got to I've got to redo all of that. Um, so I did the sectioning off so that you could. If you're getting really frustrated with with this the, the area you're doing now, you could leave it and, and do it last um, if you wanted to to change it up or whatever, um, instead of having to just uh, recycle the exact same uh, process. I found it was um, a really nice way for me to to force me to like master each part, because um, once I figured this out, you know, you can see how quickly I'm going through it now because I've done it so mm. many times. Um, which is why I'm less good at the second area because <laughs> I did the beginning so much that, you know, I didn't necessarily master the second areas a lot, but, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I like the way you did that. Yeah. And I definitely, I, I tried to sort of tweak the difficulty such that when you did, as you say, master the level, it, it was reproducible. It wasn't sort of, um, you know, it's very, it's a very controllable environment, uh, there's, there's no moving en entities, there's no uh, sort of visual uh, obstruction or anything like that. I, I, I wanted you to feel like, no, I've cracked this, and now now I, I feel f I, I can have faith in, in completing this area without losing too many Mugu along the way. Um, uh, we have a question in the chat. Oscar, what's your favorite part of the level? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's a difficult question. Um... I probably feel happiest with the design of this sleeping mechanic area that we just went through. Um, but I might say that my favorite part for me personally playing through it is actually the final 
section, uh, which we're obviously yet to get to, but um, it features very little, I guess, compared to what, what uh, how much can usually be uh, in these levels. Uh, and I guess I, I really enjoy it because to me it feels so surprising in, in these really, really dense uh, gardens which are always trying to kill you to have some time just to sort of go on a peaceful walk, which oh, is no. often why we might walk through pretty gardens in the real world or whatever. Um, I don't know, there's just something about it that I, I really enjoy the sort of aesthetic of, of being so high. They got me again. I don't know if we're going to get there today, but um, we can see actually, it's not immediately apparent, but right from the starting area, there's the end. Uh, if you if you rotate your camera up a little bit, you can see the prime specimen that we're trying to get to up around the outside of the arena. So what we're, what we're ultimately trying to do is get through that gate in the middle, the Shroom Evader gate, and then make it up here around to the outside. I really liked sort of teasing the end like that. Because it's sort of it's it's nice to know roughly where you're aiming. So so if one's observant at the start, you know that you must somehow get up there. Yeah, so and I like that it's, it's not immediately apparent. Like the, I first noticed it just because you can see that tongue. I don't know if the broadcast has caught up to uh, for you to what I'm saying, but uh, right as you walk off to the right, I can just see the tongue of the prime specimen. Um, so the first few times I played it, I didn't even realize. I just thought those were, <laughs> you know, there were some plants and decorations and things up there. So, yeah, uh, I, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also put a, uh, I forget what they're called, but the, the blue sentinel uh, enemies, um, sort of patrolling around the perimeter. And he, it's only one, and obviously he, he moves quite slowly. But I like that slight dynamic uh, movement, which given you're going through the puzzles, there will likely be some point that he walks past you. Yeah. Um, drawing your attention to the fact that it's not just a wall at the edge, but more of a raised platform. One of the things, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but you, you joined us at uh, another event uh, about a month ago where some of the uh, level designers were talking about their levels, and we spoke about this level. And one of the things you pointed out was that you wanted... When the player finally gets up there, you wanted it to be less stressful and more of a, uh, a moment of reflection on where you had come from because you can walk around the outside and it's much less dangerous than this, this lower area and you can kind of get this wide view of everything that you just traversed. Um, I thought that that was a really interesting, uh, a really interesting way to approach the end of the level it's almost like a victory lap around things yeah yeah absolutely um i don't know i i th i really like the idea of just being able to take a moment and take a step back because i guess often you know with our normal day day to day lives being so chaotic we often don't get a moment to appreciate what we've just done or or uh just i, I don't know take a step back um and not rush through things and observe how you're feeling. Um, so whilst it's a little bit forced uh, introspection or, or calm, I think it's quite nice instead of sometimes in these levels, you might suddenly come across the end and it's a really nice surprise and you think, oh my God, I made it. Uh, in this one, it, you know you've made it quite far in advance. Um, and it's quite nice, as you said, if it took you 90 minutes to do, I, I wanted it to, to not be a sort of sprint to the finish, but a finally, like, I've actually made it. Um, oh, dear. See, I knew we were making... Yeah, I, I, I tried to cheat there, and I got punished for it. <laughs> uh, there's a mechanic where if you get caught in your fall animation for too long, or it triggers over and over and over, we just... We assume that you're stuck and dead and kill you. So that's what happened there. I tried to squeeze through some rocks I shouldn't have to go faster, and I didn't make it. Um, <laughs> yeah, just to get back to what you were saying, that's, uh, I, I love that you thought that through while you were making this. Um, and I mean, and obviously I knew we were making a very deep and philosophical game when we, we made a game about <laughs> tiny exploding mushrooms. Um, <laughs> so well done. I'm going to give this about one more try to see if I can get into the end area. Uh, I'm a little rusty. All right, so. 
I do often find it, uh, you know, games can often be very fast paced. You know, e even um, uh, battle royales, which uh, from multiplayer for multiplayer games are quite, uh, I guess you'd say, long games. You know, one if you win, I, I don't know how long they usually take, but let's say 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something. Um, I, I always, as a player, would expect some sort of big uh, celebratory thing at the end, but often. Uh, it's more of a just like nice now let's move on to the yeah, next level it or, just ends and you uh, go again right yeah 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 you know e e even the the souls franchise which it's all about that finishing moment it just says simple text you defeated and it's all right next <laughs> i definitely had to get used to that uh playing through all these levels and you know one thing that has come up on the discord and in past streams was um have you ever thought about a, a checkpoint mechanism and I can tell you that we I hadn't before this contest, but uh, I certainly wish that I had now. Um, because some of the longer levels... Uh, oof, like, grueling. Especially when you're playing so many at once. Um, yeah. I can imagine. I, I was surprised, because um, I remember when I started out uh, learning the game and stuff at the start of this competition. Uh, obviously, the, the desert level is by far the biggest. But e even the other levels, you know, initially I thought that this Lumina, uh, bioluminescent bio um, was decently big, but, you know, you couldn't fit too much in. And then as time went on, I started to realize, wow, you can actually, you can fit a lot in. And some of these levels felt, I don't know quite how, but so much longer, even though it was geographically the same size. That's a good point. So, you, you really notice it. Um get killed by this oh it got me again you really notice that um, <laughs> like that's something that you notice when you get to the the upper ring here which i've which i've failed to do uh is how much you made the space work for you like you've used every inch of the inner ring and like you said it's not that big but when you get up and see it and realize how much of it is just you know forcing you to go back or winding through each area uh, it's quite impressive so Thank you. Well done. Uh, someone has said, why don't you try that part you can't do first way, and that way you finish it, you know you can do the other. That's true. That would be a good strategy, but I'm stubborn, and I just throw <laughs> myself at a problem over and over and over until I can get it. Um, I think we're going to move on to the next level in a minute, but uh, is there any uh, any of the other, the other um, the winners here, is there any anything you want to um ask oscar about this or comment about his level before we move on um, <clears throat> i was gonna say obviously you spent so much time on like the sleeping the sleep mugu and moving around and stuff is there any other mechanics that you're thinking about doing like, or that, that you tested out that didn't really there definitely were i, I remember when i first discovered the sleep, sleep mechanic i wondered how uh how far you could travel without them um because i thought you you could you could almost add to a, a you could build on the maze concept uh, and build some sort of maze but you weren't sure exactly where you wanted to leave the mugu and where you wanted to go off to and um i started to experiment with that but uh i think if you go a certain distance from the mugu and they're sleeping then they die yeah they um, pop eventually yeah they pop and obviously that's that's deliberate you guys wanted to to keep them together um but uh, I remember thinking that would have been quite cool. Uh, and there were a few other ideas I wanted to have. I, I, I did originally hope um, that there was some synergy with EG the fire mechanic uh, and hoping that you could set things on fire by not alighting it yourself, but by alighting the um, spitters and then their projectiles could could light it on fire and things like that sort of have a chain reaction um but uh yeah a lot, a lot of stuff didn't come to fruition so i had to sort of experiment with with what we had well well done i love it thank you uh you will be happy to know that we're we have improved the uh chain reaction element of of fire uh, behind the scenes Ooh. in preparation for the upcoming release um there's some cool stuff you can do with it now uh including 
we've changed a little bit the way gooey moogoo work and one of the things you can do with them now is shoot goo on stuff and then shoot spicy moogoo at the goo to light the goo on fire so you can attach it to enemies or you can create your own fuses by leaving a trail of goo and then lighting that so there's some neat things you can do that's really cool that sounds awesome let's uh why don't we go with maze of amazement next that's you right derek oh indeed indeed okay maze of amazement um <laughs> so you and i have spoken about this a little bit in the past but for the sake of anyone watching who, who wasn't privy to that conversation, um, why don't you tell us about your level? Yeah, so with Maze of Amazement, um, the main idea I wanted for this level was I didn't want it to be like an A to Z kind of level. What I wanted to do was make a level where there's several areas that you need to delve into. So it's kind of like, kind of like a game within a game kind of thing. And what I wanted to do was really focus on the player doing different skills so they don't end up being, um, end up having like sore fingers by the end. Um, so really, really split it all into different areas. For example, the, the area you're in, I call the slow patience area, where <laughs> the player is, <laughs> for the torches and stuff, they're, it's quite slow and trying to like time it and making sure you're not jumping the gun for example and with the giants i've got these wee kind of hidey bits which i based this whole area off of like the old harry potter games where you need to sneak through the corridor then you jump in the side with the teachers coming down and that's one of the, the, the feels i really wanted around this in this section of the game and um a lot of it was just it, it, a lot of it was just trying to get the the patrols going um the right way <laughs> well it definitely <laughs> works you know for an enemy that i was worried wasn't effective enough like these big slow hex gullet guys the the walking trees um they seem so harmless because they're so slow but at least in my experience what i found is like they tempt me into playing incorrectly because i don't want to wait for them like here, I just, like you said, I have to wait for him to finish his patrol, and you've given me a little area here to dodge into for him to go by. But I'm always tempted to try and sneak by or to see if I can get up behind him and get around him so I don't have to wait. <laughs> um, and there, there was a number of levels that use them in this way, so uh, they're doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I love that. And uh, when doing the patrols, I'm quite heavy fingered sometimes, so like, I'll press it too tight and it'll be like the other side of the map so it took a few tries trying to get get the patrol right but um yeah this se section of the map i really wanted to kind of like slow down the play kind of like have a kind of slower pace even though it's probably the, lo the longest to do it all the tasks i've got um and also wanted this level so that when you're waiting around you can also still see where the game's ending and you get a wee time just to look around and be like, okay, what other, what ne what's the next section I want to go into? Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it, it definitely, I mean, it has that effect. You can pan out so far, but I mean, you know, I'm seeing less than a quarter here, uh, maybe a fifth or a sixth of what there is. Um, when I, I mean, if I zoom right down, I can see this whole other side I haven't been to. Um, we had a lot of mazes submitted, like, you know, I think a lot of people's first instinct is like, oh, I could, I could make a maze. Um, but a couple things that stood out about this one definitely was, I mean, how meticulously you used the space. I mean, look how straight all of these, these walls are planted. Um, I imagine that was frustrating at the time <laughs> with our system to get this so so perfect but uh it stands out you know you use the entire map you make me backtrack um but one thing that i really loved is the way you used you created uh keys and gates with these exploding turnips and the little the bushes with like 
uh, here from above, you can see these turnips next to this group of bushes and you've left a gap in the wall so that the fire can travel through to the other side. Um, just a really clever way to make me go to almost every inch of this maze uh, before I've technically beaten it. I really like that. Um, but in terms of the walls, uh, there's been a few times where I've created a, an area and I've ended up scrapping it because I thought, oh no, the walls are going crazy, it's going into the next bit, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll scrap that, start again, do something different. Um, and especially when trying to make the gap big enough so that obviously I've got the, the bushes going through so you can burn them, but not big enough for the player to fit through. Um, so it took, it took a couple of tries doing a, a few areas, um, but I, I've I made a couple lives, and this is the one I had the most fun with, I think. I really, um, I, I quite liked, I, I, it's one of the ones I felt like I did a couple more things than I did with the other ones, and I really liked it. He's <laughs> if I say so myself, sorry. Seeing <laughs> me, seeing me die now. <laughs> 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 See, like, I knew, I just thought I could go there, and I, I knew I should have waited. Patience is usually the correct play with a level like this, but... Punished, punished again. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll go check out the other. I'll, I'll um, take these mugu and go the other direction so we can see the other side here. Actually, that's an, so. That's an interesting question. My my inclination here is to go. I always go this way, and I mean, oh no, does it come right in the corner? Oh no, I'm just trapped forever. Um, my inclination is always to go right to go to that sort of like four fire spitter area with the big rock golem and go around that side and clear those gates. Um, did you give any thought? Like, is there a correct way to start this level? Um, well, my main, main idea is like, whenever you start off, I like, well, especially in my case, whenever you start a level, uh, the inclination is to go straight forward. And I thought if I make the, the I'm going to call them halls for now, but like I made the hall slightly bigger than I did some other areas and so the player is inclined to go forward and then you'll see the beasts roaming left and right and the map kind of opens up so what I wanted to do was uh, get like players to look around and you can see the gates so it introduces the gates idea so the player then knows okay I'm gonna need to do a couple of things to get to the end so there's, there's never really any any path to really go down. Uh, one of the main things I wanted to portray in this Lego design was to, um, if you're struggling in one area and go, ah, I just can't get this, and thought, okay, I'll go to another area. I'm doing something a little bit different. Make, make myself feel better about <laughs> um, what I was doing. So I wanted players to have that option and be able to be like, okay, I can do something, do something a little bit different just to calm down. <laughs> Interesting. Because, yeah. So you can, you can see me it's... now with these cabbages. Um, I, so... I found this such a trap because, like, you come all the way in there for two mugu and, like, probably you lose two more. <laughs> you lose more than two on the way in there. I remember getting through that and being like, ah, oh, I got baited so hard into doing that. <laughs> oh, uh, it was actually the first time I worked on this game, on this level, sorry. And one thing I really, uh, with this area is I wanted it to be an additional level so that people at the end are, once, the, once they figure out it's just there for a couple of Mugu, at the end it's just there to kind of boost the amount of Mugus you have, or whether or not it's for like the perfectionists who want to get every bit, get everywhere, finish every task. So I wanted to try and appeal to people who may have struggled throughout the level and also the people who really want to like perfect the level. Uh, and also, I tried making it as infuriating as possible, <laughs> just to set the tone. <laughs> well, it definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, oh yeah, I, I tried making this game, this level as infuriating as I can. And I remember like thinking at the end, thinking, oh, I made this too easy. And I think I think it's just because I played it through about like twenty times each section, and I was still struggling. But I was still thinking. I think it's too easy and we've you crank up a little bit <laughs> i remember you saying that uh at the friends play games event well i i think i mentioned how difficult i, I actually found it to 
to complete. Um, and, and as a compliment, like, there's a lot to it. Uh, and I remember you saying, like, oh, I was worried it was too easy. Um, <laughs> I definitely yeah. don't think it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And just the, the level with the, the shroom evator there. Uh, that was one of the ones I was like, I wasn't sure how that was going to go down because I wanted that to be, I call it the logic area. Because I feel like for some players, they'll go into it, see a shroom evator and go, okay, I'm going to need to hop on top of that and try and get through this level. Whereas end of the day, you can actually just walk through it, and also you've got you won't be able to see the flames and stuff. So I wanted it to really be a kind of logic one, uh, a kind of logic area, where you actually might end up making the life, the area a lot harder than you, you should, need to. Yeah, or you can. I mean, yeah. I guess you saw me. I just run under it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I definitely looked at it and I was like, oh, is it? Do I need to get onto these? Like, I was curious if maybe getting on one of these sandstone blocks allowed me, and it, I think it would. Like, I could skip ahead. Uh, I'm pointing at my screen, which you can't see. Let me see if I can do it without getting all my Mugu <laughs> killed in this fire. Oh, I got killed. Uh, so right above where it says the word batch, I think if I get up on that sandstone block, I can shoot that turnip and drop down on that side. It's interesting. I've never actually tried that. Um, I don't imagine it would significantly change the way that the level plays out since you do really need to go almost everywhere anyway. But uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, like to, I like to being able to like allow the player to find out these wee different ways of doing things. Like I didn't want it to be there's just one way of doing this. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be if you think things through, you can maybe bypass a couple of bits or whatever. But, um, but yeah, no. <laughs> I, I was just about to ask that, actually. You, you've made the uh, the walls small enough that you can throw Mugu over them, uh, which is when I when I first played this level, I didn't do that at all, just because I guess I, I straight as an, as an arrow for whatever reason. Um, but seeing Wayne do it, Wayne do it, he... There's quite a few clever moments where he he gets a, a turn up where he he doesn't have to go around the last little bit of a section he he sort of skips it and, and does it like that is that something you wanted uh yeah yeah I, that's really cool I, when i was first designing it i was trying to make it pernickety and then i thought you know what like i'd like players to be thinking this through instead of just going through the motions um but yeah so i wanted players to really think oh, maybe i could maybe i could make this level a little bit easier by doing, uh, thinking it through. That's really cool. But it was also, in terms of the size of the wall, um, I know Wayne was Wayne was showing this level uh, on a stream, and I was looking, when you scroll down, and it's like quite horizontal, you can see all the, the monsters moving, you can see like the top of them moving around, and I really wanted to illustrate like, you could see all the movement and try and see if you could see all the life around, around the level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely you can, which I love. Uh, I mean, it's like I said. I think this. I mean, it speaks for itself because it, you know, is one of our our finalist winners. Um, this is the best. I think far and away the best maze level we had submitted for all the reasons we've talked about. Like, look at that view, which you, you guys will see in about ten seconds. Um, <laughs> I just love that effect, seeing all the different things on the ends of all the different walls. Um, and then having to figure out how to get over there. So, very well done. <laughs> Any Thank other you. questions for Derek? If we take another couple minutes here while I struggle through this level before we move on. <laughs> oh, <he> dead again. <laughs> <laughs> was was there ever a point, because you, you've made it, uh, as Wayne mentioned, you've made it with the lock and key sort of design. You've made it so that you for the most part have to cover the entire map was there ever a point where you wanted it to be more of a the player doesn't know where to go and they, they might go the right way or the wrong way um i that was one of the things i scrapped because i was i was wanting it to be like i did i did want the players to go wherever they wanted and then i got to a point where i was kind of like um it became too much and I was just like, if you've got so much, too much options, then I feel like 
I can kind of polish certain areas. Um, so I wanted a kind of a hallway to quite a few we a few areas, uh, just to be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so players coming into like, trying to think, the trying to think. Um, so that players, when you go into that open area, they can see visually see how to get into each area. Um, and I just wanted to be straightforward to get into the levels, cause I, the areas, because I felt like some areas were, like, looking back, I think some areas were a bit harder than I meant them to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes off really well, though, because you can tell each area is polished as a sort of separate section. It's really nice. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Dead again. We're going we're gonna to end every level on me dying. I'm realizing as we go that I don't think I'm going to beat any of these on stream today. <laughs> uh, yeah, really well done. Like I said, it what, what stuck out for me was just you have to go everywhere. And I, and I think that it does the refinement that you put into all the different parts of it justice because there were some very good mazes submitted um, that looked beautiful, but that weren't as... You could skip 75% of them if you went the right way off the bat. Which I think, you know, ultimately is not a great level because all of that work goes unseen. And it's just, if you make the right turn at the beginning, you're at the end. And despite some of those levels having really polished parts and looking really beautiful, you know, it, it feels cruddy to, to, to suddenly just be done right after you start. Uh, which I think a lot of the mazes that we had submitted suffered from. And uh, the way you built this, especially with the gates um, and sectioning off all the different areas, really solved that. So, excellent. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> I can kind of imagine, like, seeing like him putting so much time on, like, just just placing uh, the blocks and the walls in the straight line. And then I, I know how frustrating that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assumed the first time we spoke, I was like, you must have drawn this all out and planned this on paper or in another program and you're like no i just kind of built it <laughs> to me it looks meticulously planned out but well done i remember i remember you saying that and i was turning around to my girlfriend and i was like what <laughs> um but but yeah no thank you very much thank you okay i think this is uh, the ruins. So Annabelle, let's take a look at your level. In terms of following on from Derek's infuriating level. <laughs> Another, I mean, I'm going to say this about all of them. These are all one of my favorite levels. Uh, like obviously, they're you know, your winners, all of you. But uh, you have just some really, really cool moments in this level and um like overall it's well crafted too i think it's one of the best uses of the the desert level uh not i mean relatively not a lot of people used it compared to some of the other maps um but there are some there's some stuff in here we're going to see as we go that just nobody else did um and it was genuinely fun for me to like figure my way out through some of this stuff so uh, why don't I start uh, dying over and over and over and give you a chance to tell us about your level? So, so basically the first thing is like the stream of beta into lava and I basically I started this because when I first started playing around with the editor I was just like how can I break the editor like what will it let me do and I realized that if you put like the lava you can't place an object on lava but if you place the lava next to the object you can expand the lava yeah. <laughs> underneath the object. So if you do like all your movie on those elevators, you will die. And so the whole point of that is you can't get all of them across at once. So if you want to rush it, you can just take a few and like sacrifice the others. But I also planned it out a bit like the kind of like old riddle thing where you've kind of got the fox, the chicken and the um, grain that you're trying to get over the river. So you can do a few Moogoo at once. And if you keep putting them to sleep at the separate stages, you can get them all across the elevator. Oh, interesting. I my yeah my I I just um, shoot and run, and uh, if you if you hit it right, you can be shooting a couple before the elevator goes all the way down. 
uh, which I did there and get across, but I definitely died on there a few times. Or the first time, I just put them all on and walked on, and you're in the lava and you die. Um, so uh, the next thing I love is this this sort of trap that you walk into because probably you approach this ramp something like this after coming through that first area and uh if you don't rotate the camera you're likely to just walk up over the edge of this and die <laughs> in more lava um so i i really like that and then the the element of like having to go search for this cool little hidden passageway here because when I'm, I was originally kind of coming up with the level ideas, I was like, well, what if you just had to, like, escape some kind of, like, booby trap tower or whatever, and, like, I was thinking, like, having, like, different ways to go around, so, like, having kind of little hidden areas where, so the more direct path isn't actually the way you're meant to go. Can you tell me about this? If you're seeing this uh... is inspired directly by Indiana Jones, the first bit of Raiders of the Lost Ark where he's escaping the ruins with the idol and the boulder just comes out behind him. So I, I saw those cabbages and that's the first thing I thought of. I mean, that's what we thought when we were making it. And I mean, it's far from a perfect asset. Like there's things about it I still don't love, but uh, this is, I think the, the most Indiana Jones execution of, of the use of the desert cabbage that I've seen. Um, so let me ask you, is your intent that I just run here? That like, can I, can I, can I, out, you run, can I you can outrun just it? just about dive to the right before it hits you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to show you what I've been doing, which is if you come up enough, it'll see the Mugu in the air. So I've been doing that. Um, but let me, let me kill myself and we'll try and run from it because I want to see that in action. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you could trigger those with the Mugu. <laughs> So I just thought the gardener would trigger it. So I was like, I spent a lot of time placing the kind of rocks up the side of the ramp so that you had to trigger the cabbage. Uh, but you could still just about get around it. No, it goes after either of them. So I need to run and go to the right. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. You, you're going to hear me laugh a lot before you see me die. <laughs> since you're a little bit lagged on the screen. I was trying to make like the level really difficult. <laughs> I was worried at times I kind of made it too difficult, especially towards the end. There's a couple of pretty hard parts. Um, let's see if we can get there. I mean, ultimately, it's all very well thought out and placed. Um, so let's see here. Through here. So this is the other end of that trap which I like. I, I love getting to an inaccessible area that you see early on and getting to the other side of it. And then, I don't know, there's just, there's like a, a certain level of satisfaction from getting to the other side of something that clearly doesn't want you to. So what was your what was your while I while I try and get into some of the later areas here, what um like process wise how did you how did you start this like was the Indiana Jones thing something you you knew you wanted to do as soon as you started building or um, how did you approach this like as a whole thing or section by section? Oh, the Indiana Jones thing with the cabbage boulder was something I kind of knew I wanted to do as soon as I kind of saw that asset, even though I kind of went, a lot of people are going to do it, but I want to do it as well. And then, as I said, the shroom elevated into the lava was just something I discovered kind of playing around initially and thought that would be a fun thing to add. So I didn't think too many people would actually kind of place things on top of lava, just because you can't actually do it without kind of putting it all towards, like, or stretching out the lava. And then, so yeah, I kind of like build it up section by section, kind of picking out puzzles I went along. So I go, okay, I've got like these gaps between like the raised up bits of the area. Like how do I want to like fill in the gaps so the gardener can get across, but like also make it difficult. So here's, um, 
another thing I love about this, um, which a lot of people don't know, is that some of these assets that the Mugu can't walk on, they bounce off of. So we have another section here where I can't take all my Mugu on the elevator, but I can bounce them across that rock. Um, so I love that you have that rock there for that. I, I don't know if it's for that purpose, but it works for that purpose. Uh, that's one of my favorite spots of the of the level. That's one of those like lesser known behaviors um, that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I think you just need to figure out by trial and error in the maker mode with how the different assets work. And that one just worked out happily. Um, it makes me feel like we need to do more Mugu bouncing in the future because it feels real good to do. Yeah, this, this I think is where the level starts getting very difficult. Yeah, this is the uh, the beck and spam area. <laughs> I, yeah. I lost all but one of my Mugu there. Uh, can you tell me about this Shroom Evader? Well, originally I was going to have like two paths. You could either go on this Shroom Evader again, but I was also going, at that point you've done the Shroom Evader puzzle three times, so I didn't want to force them to do it. So I made it like the kind of alternate path around there, and then I just kind of decided that I preferred the alternate path. And the alternate path was really difficult, so I was kind of going, well, people aren't going to do it if they can just quickly do the Shroom of Age for a third time. So I thought I would, like, leave it in so it just looks like a more ruined part where you would have originally been able to cross there, but obviously the rocks are now blocking it. Cool. Yeah, I love that. Like, true to the name of the level. Um, I definitely spent some time trying to figure this out, but, um, yeah, we, we died there up. A bunch of times. Let's see if I can get through here. With I my think rock. when you were talking about checkpoints earlier, I was thinking I would have loved to be able to put checkpoints on this level. Oh, you went in the lava. There's a Mugo alive somewhere, so let's just let's just restart it. Did you um, did you build any other levels, Annabelle? Like, do you have no, levels no, on other maps? Level this is the only one. Okay. Did you do? Did you experiment around with the other maps at all? A tiny bit, but I think because obviously, like seeing Oscar's level now, I've just realized like how much you could fit into the other maps. But like, I kind of saw this one. I was like, this is giving me the most space to like play around with. And I kind of like from early on, I wanted to kind of do a kind of castly ruiny thing. So this kind of like stony aesthetic of like the level was kind of really suited to what I wanted to do. Cool. You can see that Mugu bouncing again in a second here. I love the just the little rooms especially the ones that like this room I like that I can't get in you know um, mm -hmm. but having to shoot the Mugu in to do some replenishing there of my supply um, that was something um, early on in the contest uh, we did an update where you could oh I've done it now <laughs> shot too many across uh, early on, we did an update in the contest that really um, allowed us to do object stacking, which we didn't we didn't have right when we started this. Uh, it was something we were working on but wasn't quite ready. And um, man, it opened up so many possibilities for levels like you know like this one, just to allow you to create something that feels like you're walking through the remains of a structure, and to create like rooms and doorways and things that are just have so much more dimension to them than. Uh, a single level of, of objects would allow. I did. I started a lot of this level before the object stacking update. So oh, I spent a long time trying to place the walls on like the other walls. Yeah. So when you saw that update go through, you came <laughs> in and then really just like was it like starting from scratch or did you just kind of build upon what no, was already I just, there? I just continued it. It was yeah, it was. I was very happy when the app update came through, because it was... The hardest thing was just placing a wall on top of another wall. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's even some, some more minor improvements to it that are going to be going live um, 
when we release later this summer so um, all of the feedback that we've had and the things that we've seen everybody who is submitting contest levels do has really helped us uh, refine the way that that works that, that's why kind of like later on in the level it goes more ruins and less kind of two story up walls because at that point I placed so many kind of second story walls oh, and God. I was getting kind of tired and irritated <laughs> when I placed so many um, any final questions or comments for Annabelle before we move on to uh, Reynolds level um, hopefully no one minds if we go this was supposed to be an hour stream I think we'll go about 10 or 15 minutes longer um, but I wanted to give each level enough time so any other uh, the winners want to ask anything while I load up this next level uh, so other than the hidden door, is there any other, like, uh, is there any other paths? Like, is, is there any choices, like, of, like, how, is that, like, how you, I don't know how to, how to rephrase it, it's just, um, is there any other way you can solve the path, like, passive through how you go into the hidden door? No, the, le the level itself is, like, quite linear. Okay. Cool. Uh, I was wondering. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool. You you mentioned that you quite like the uh, being able to put the lava under things, and that's how you came across the the mushroom level mechanic. Um, I really liked the aesthetic of the how the lower area, which I think most people would naturally be, they would make it the area that you walk as the gardener. You made that the lava area, and then everything raised up was where you walked along for the most part it did you sort of start off with that lava covering the area and then work off uh, the the base structure of that map or was the lava something you, you added later on no the blood basically because in that area you have kind of like four raised bits and i originally kind of envisioned it as like almost like four towers that you would end up having to like go into solve a puzzle in that tower then move on so i ended up feeling like the bottom bit was lava and then you would have kind of passageways so like the boulder is like the pathway from like what would have been the first tower to like the second tower so obviously like as i developed it it became kind of more one massive building as opposed to four separate ones cool that's really cool that was really well done remembering correctly that you said it was inspired by tomb raider yeah yeah just it's kind of old ruins and puzzles and yeah, it's done well it didn't even occur to me that we were doing that all of the walking on tops and that's really really well done Cool. I'm going to have to go back and look at that again. Great work. Um, Reynold. Welcome to the Abandoned Castle. There's a theme with these last couple levels. Ruins, Abandoned Castles. Um, I, just because I got to say it every time, one of my favorite levels. Uh, I've played this one a ton on stream. I think you... If I'm correct, you submitted this fairly early on in the contest. Um, I, I that... don't think so. No? I think it's a few hours before like the deadline. And oh, was it? I okay. Kind of typed it in the chat and say if you if you can try it so that I can uh, like make sure it works. Like have probably probably just look how how the response are and then like probably a little more bit more adjustment before like uh before some, like a real submission but i i'm glad it went well so uh maybe that's why i remember it i definitely like i said i've definitely played a lot um another excellent example of what you can achieve with the verticality um why don't you why don't you tell us your your approach to this tell us about your level and, and how you made it uh so basically i'm just thinking about like because when i first really tried like experimenting everything so uh it's when i when i also kind of like look into like what i can really do with like all the other like objects but like the very thing the very first thing i popped up is like how you can 
it's the field like it looks because it's circular and then it's surrounded by bricks walls uh and then it just makes you feel like it looks like a castle so what i wanted to do it's like probably a building but like especially like the the game is also about plants so it's i'm just kind of like mixing between like a castle and plants so uh that's that's how the general direction comes out uh when i when i start working on it i love um I love that this whole big structure we're on has an interior. These little, the way you use these these breakable rocks to make these pits, um, you know, like I can see down there that there's lava. I definitely figured that out by jumping down the first time rather than rotating my camera. Um, <laughs> I think this one might be lava too. Uh, I just thought that was so cool. Um, again, another like great showcase of, of what you can do with the assets let's take a look down oh no this one leads to a fire spitter <laughs> um i've done some exploration in here but can i ask you like is it can i beat the level if i go down there at this point uh no okay you can't really because uh basically down there it's uh because intentionally I, I i built those blocks it's to break and then like as long as you don't look too uh as long as your your perspective is not too high then you you certainly fall into that and uh and also like how things works are like you after like uh you have gone through like two times of troubles with those blocks will you really break the third one and then or you just like kind of choose the other way out uh and i yeah, definitely just I found think... it by trial and error um let me see if i can get back up there patience is a virtue or else you die to fire. So there's our end point all the way around the other side. Um, can ignore that this time. Okay. So you'll see what how I this is how I approach it and you can tell me if this is like the intended oops so I don't have enough to oh no <laughs> uh, you break that block and you fall down there right and then you can walk through that back exit yeah um, off the top of your head like how this is obviously a big and complicated structure with those interior bits and all those different areas to fall in how did you approach making it like this must have taken a lot of time to build out did, did you do any planning ahead of time or did you just kind of build it a layer up from the ground up can you uh, give any insight uh, into what it took to make this big uh, abandoned castle so i would say it's like I build up like the part where we start first and then like the other side of the of the other side of the map later on uh so yeah basically it's the first the first struggle i have like when i was building the map is like how uh how the blocks will not stay uh stay at the top uh, if you click on it again like yeah. once you clear clean the bottom uh and like on top of that it's like how i need to figure out how i should make a hollow uh, hallway and like after that I, I i need to know how i can really clean up uh the blocks that i used as space mm -hmm. uh and in addition i think it's kind of like the direction the direction that like i need to uh guide players to go through to because uh 
because it's definitely confusing in a way like uh there are other way out uh and in terms of like yeah this i think you're approaching a trap yeah uh, so i was gonna say i definitely spent a lot of time trying to figure out this whole interior area and just dying a whole bunch before i concluded that i just shouldn't be going in there um but i love that it exists uh, I, I guess I, I was I, curious if there was a, if there was another path from those drop downs up top that I just didn't find. Um, there are there like I I hope you trust me though like I took those <laughs> direction signs. I, yeah, eventually I was like, okay, I gotta just follow the arrows. The arrows won't lie to me. Um, I think the first time uh, when you stream my stage, I was like looking at. Sometimes I was like looking at looking at you playing, and it's like, hey, there's a there's hey, there's a direction sign. Why don't you follow it? It's like, it's going left. Why you go right? <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I just need to be more trusting. That's all it comes down to. Um, to go back to what you're saying about the way you built this, I mean, this doesn't help you now, but you'd be happy to know that uh, the stacking is much improved. You can make a stack now and click and delete any object and the rest stay where they are so it's really easy to create floating platforms or to build a big structure and just delete your way through it to create hallways and paths and things so um i'm sorry that you had to suffer through an early version of it that wasn't so user friendly but um this was definitely one of the levels we looked at when we were like we need to make this easier on people because someone created this with the current system um, and we can do a lot to help. Just gonna try and pop this guy. Oh, that wasn't my intention, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, si similar to um, uh, Derek's level. I think that's actually just a trick I learned in Derek's level that I applied here. The shooting over the wall there. So a bit of a maze maze section here. Um, and we yeah. also referenced your so, level a lot when we were trying to improve the uh, uh, like occlusion and the ability to see the gardener under and beneath things. Um, oh, I lost them all turret bulb got me sorry you were gonna say something oh um i think it's just yeah i also like get stuck in the concept of a maze too so that's like although like the first thing like before this castle even before i even tried to build the castle it's like i tried to try to make use of the i tried to make use of the stone too but it's it's more like how I create a tower where you like start falling like start at the top and falling to the bottom while like I have to I, I really have to know where I can see myself uh, as the gardener this um, that was the original concept of the whole castle but uh, I just sometimes I think it's just not too possible so that's why I move on I'm gonna wait again here. Yeah, it definitely took a lot of like learning each individual. Oh, I killed a whole bunch of them. Learning each individual part in your level and getting through. Um, let me move you. I still have six. That's enough. <clears throat> yeah, this is like what we were dreaming of when we made the stacking. Is like people could build giant structures that you can walk all through uh so we were happy to see this level and realize that we weren't crazy for thinking that was possible what uh what would you say is your favorite part of this level mm, i would say it's still the falling stone because i i sometimes i just like joke to my friend it's like when they when they look at me playing it, 
I was just telling them it's it's a social experiment because <laughs> um, things are like there are times that like the, the direction that's the direction signs are also kind of like confusing but like it, they are pointing at the right direction so I have to make it confusing so that like people will start trying like um, falling into traps and like and it's sort of like funny like how I how when I when I was like trying the game like trying the stage myself I have to make sure like really everything is going to work uh, and like when I test with the test with the monsters I have to see if the if the combo really works so the last time it's uh it's the it's a plan that calls upon uh, the mugus and then the other one slaps all of it okay we're through let's uh let's see if i can remember this area this is like there's sort of like a leap of faith here that you have to make to be able to <laughs> to get through here you got to be good at running and moving your camera quickly to try and figure out where all the fire is coming from to the right yeah i was gonna say that one's on a timer i remember that now and back around here oh no Yes, 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 okay. Alright. We're up. Rewarded with a few more Mugu. Okay, so... I'm going to stop here for a second, and I want to ask you about, uh, on the right here, this little platform with the two fire spitters, oh. also a trap, right? There's No, no I, you're not supposed to pass there. Yeah, okay, so there's no way through there. I investigated that a little bit, because one is one is timed, and one is uh, proximity. One is timed. And, yes. and it looks like it it's supposed to tempt me into going that way. And I, I spent a little bit of time trying to hammer my way through it and see if there was a way to get in between them and sneak down the side. And I was wondering if that was like a difficult but alternate path that you provided, uh, but it was just a trap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think like making one of the fire spitter like uh, spits it lower, like, because making them spit, it just makes the player feel like it's going to, it's timered. But like, like, and they're like, it's kind of like when you feel like you can go past it, but like the other one is actually when you approach it, it just like start killing you. So there's and no the way path, through. And the path is actually so narrow that you can, uh, the fire spitter can really miss it. It's another cool moment of burning down a big fuse there, which I like. Um, <clears throat> So there's a bit of a mo <laughs> this moment here also helped me with something that we realized we had to fix. Um, that beckon plant that is underneath all of this structure really makes this next platform difficult. And I mean that's not not something that's your fault, but it opened my eyes about the fact that the the beckon plants have now that with the added verticality. See what I mean? See how they all went running there? Mm -hmm. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Very difficult. Um, but that's something we've 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 worked on is the way the beckon plants work through the levels of things because I'm sure that wasn't intended. But the beckon plants see all directions, uh, so they now they don't see above themselves, so that that one that's underneath there wouldn't detect me and wouldn't pull my things I think there. originally like the plan attracts uh, the Mugus and then they would just like literally jump down and uh, I kind of call it like a happy accident because that kind of increased the difficulty uh, because like they would just jump 
jump to where the plant's uh, right, right where where it is. Yeah. And then you you, the gardener has no choice to but to jump down and follow and repeat the whole thing again. You get them again, yeah. Um, but uh, I I'm not sure why, like I'm I'm pretty sure it's probably because like the updates probably why it just like start going backwards. Yeah, they're just trying to run to it, but we've we've improved that, um, so that won't be a problem in the future. Um, so we've gone about 15 minutes past when we plan to. Um, does anyone have any questions or, or uh, comments for Reynold before we, we wrap up and say goodbye for the day? It's not a question, but I just want to say I have a lot of respect for you doing all that verticality. I think that shows a lot of patience and... Uh, no, a lot of dexterity. Oh, please! I I do have a lot of frustration during the day, and uh, <laughs> sometimes sometimes I'm glad that I didn't save it because, like, sometimes when I just randomly when I click on the block that I'm not supposed to, and then it just went sky high, and then I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I always used to save almost pathologically when I knew I'd done something good so that whenever that happened I could just go straight back <laughs> well like I said sorry that you had to suffer through it but it's better now um, yeah any, any final words on uh, Reynolds lo uh, level anybody um, I just want to know do you know how long it took you to, to test all this because it looks like it takes so long to test because it looks so amazing uh for me i like i make sure i make sure myself has uh the, the whole the whole stage three times at least uh and making sure everything is going right uh that's probably a whole hour just testing every traps uh another <laughs> probably like those timer those timer fire speeders probably like I don't know. Probably another hour, like on, like, I don't think that take that that takes that much. Uh, probably like half an hour on like adjusting the timings and everything, like the duration. Like I know there is like two two parameters, which is like timing and like like the the duration of like when it spits again. So uh, yeah, basically it's just yeah trials and errors and just keep moving on and if it doesn't work make it work <laughs> well it's definitely worth it after looking at it honestly it's amazing so why don't we why don't we wrap it up there um derek oscar annabelle reynolds thank you so much for joining today um i know that uh three of you are overseas too so the timing is different than it is for us but i i from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you making the time to join us today, and uh, I appreciate you, you know, spending so much time with our game to make these amazing levels. Uh, you, all your hard work really shows, and uh, congratulations for all of you in being in our, our winner's bracket. So um, it won't be long before people are, more people are playing your levels and hopefully celebrating them with us. It's a really exciting thought. Yeah, yeah. we'll be. I mean, we, you know, we'll continue to be in touch with all of you. And uh, as always, we are on Discord. You know where to find us. And uh, why don't we sign off on that note? So, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>